Hi everybody, welcome to my third match of the online world championship. Uh, today I'm playing Dmitry Goko and yeah, as you may remember last time was a long and exciting match. Uh, so let's see what's in store for us today. As always, uh, press the like button if you enjoy this video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, here we go. So I have never played my opponent uh, I also haven't checked up, checked his uh, PR, so no idea how strong he is. So let's see if we will get some early indicators about his strength. So far, everything more or less standard, I would say. So I'm ahead in the race. I'll simply run. Yeah, probably there's no other option for him but running. I don't like this play very much. Strips the midpoint. I think it's an overplay. So should I play with more builders? Yeah, I think so. I could have considered cubing before. Now I guess he has to split his back checkers. 8 to 5 looks not that strong. But yeah, double threes can't be bad. So I really want to step up here. And then I think I just strengthen my board. Yeah, that looks good. Great shot by him. Okay, I'm ahead 15 pips. He's shooting at a second blot. Yeah, but I have a strong board. I have a hard time passing this if he cubes me up. Uh, how, nevertheless, I'm really glad that I didn't get cubed here. That was nice and I think I cannot take this, but again he refuses to cube me, so by now I would say that he's a little bit cube shy. So that's the first information that I have. Some checker plays that also felt a bit weird. I guess I have to split here. What else can I do? Yeah. So now again, this is a cube for him, I think. giving me a lot of free rolls. Yeah, if I dance, then he can already play on for the gammon. 
but let's think positive. Yes, back in the game. Of course, now it's anybody's game. No cube inside. Still has an advantage because he's ahead in the race. Shall I slot the four or bring the check this checker into play? Not so sure. Just slot the four point. Yeah, and I will be or I am in a little bit of timing trouble because I have all these the, my four back checkers have difficulties to get moving so now of course I have all the freedom in the world to to just move my checkers around I'm down in the race so I think I want to keep more contact Okay, double three, so these two and these two, nothing much to do, at least the race is a bit closer now. And now I'm even taking the lead, so we never should have gotten to this spot, although now he's in excellent shape again. But he simply could have cubed me before. And now seven pips. Well, that's that's a close call. I have an extra checker on on the deuce. Yeah, that should be right on the cusp, I guess. But yeah. I will drop this, I'm not sure, but also since I saw some mistakes by him, why should I increase the cube level in a closed game where there is no more skill involved basically? but could have easily been a take still not sure okay Double fours, that's a good shot. Only question is how I play it. I think I will just make my deuce point. Cannot cover my blot. Five is four, so question is, should I step into the outfield? I don't like 13-7 very much. Just looking for contact here. Okay, so guess. That's the natural move. Mm, 
race is about even. I have a slight advantage, but of course not into cube territory yet. Maybe we are getting closer now. So I have the anchor, but race is even. He has good structure and I don't see too many market losers here. So, and there are also bad numbers as you can see. Question is whether I should slot the point or give up the midpoint. don't think that giving up the midpoint makes much sense. I can also play. I mean, I have the deuce point, so my ace point and my eight point is devalued. So, uh, almost so look this one, this just in a close race. Better minimize shots and yeah, the eight point and the deuce point cannot be part of the same prime. So, once I made the deuce point, I'm less excited about my eight point. Okay, I will make the point. And he will try to escape, I suppose. So I better hit him, which I do. Nice. So I don't think this is too good. should just cube and I think he should pass correct decision by him I think another double four so I can make my five point I think that's the strongest of the options if I can ever make it with the, my mouse clicks here. Yeah, I think I can just make my five point very strong. So I don't think I can cube this. Now it's not so nice. I can hit here, which I probably will do. The only problem is that his sixes from the bar are good, so hardly any bad numbers. So this would be the alternative, duplicating threes. But just that looks just a bit too passive for my taste. So we'll just hit, but. Yeah, I'm not so happy about it. Okay, now I will make the bar. And we'll get into a mutual holding game, looks like. Can also, yeah, that looks a bit better maybe. So I have to give up my bar point, but yeah, I'm ahead in the race. So clearly I go for the racing move. Solid favorite, although nowhere near a cube. Getting better here. Now I've got four checkers on the midpoint. So in these holding games, you should Start thinking about a cube once you have four checkers on the midpoint because then you threaten to clear the mid with some doublets and those are your biggest market losers in these holding games. Just my racing lead is not big enough to do anything yet. So I would cube here, maybe with 10, 12 pips lead. But four pips, certainly not enough.
I could have kept the midpoint, but yeah, what for? So. So nothing special going on here. I can play like this, saving more sixes and trying to make the points. I don't like playing seven to two. And any anyway, he's not incentivized to run since he's down in the race. So I don't mind having some blots there. I mean, of course, I do hope they will become strong, will become inside points so that I'm ready once he may have to run. Okay, he's saving a six. That's fine, I guess. Yeah. Up only two pips. Don't think that this is volatile enough for a cube. Maybe if he has to jump out. So now. So could this be a cube? Feels a little bit early. Still, I mean, when he runs out, I have a perfect cube, I th think. So if he misses me now, that's a strong cube. Probably I have lost my market, so maybe I should have cubed before, but only because you lose your market sometimes. Also, it's not a Big market loss. Still have some bad numbers like 6-3 for example. So he passes. Okay, 5-4. Do I want to continue here? Maybe. Five, two, don't want to leave him anything in the outfield. Okay, nothing much to do here. I don't want to step up and open myself up to an attack. So with the back checker that is. So I much rather step up with the juice. That's a great shot. And now I'm ahead eleven pips. I think probably not enough to cube. So now I will cube. I think that, yeah, but yeah, it's, uh, what will it be, 11 pips still? Okay, now I think I got to cube if it does make his five point because, my five point because now I can simply make it and lose my market by a mile. So I was counting on him making the 20 so and I was already thinking about whether I should cube decided against it or yeah in my mind more or less but then he failed to make the point so 
So all of a sudden I had a cube, I think. Comfortably ahead in the race. Nevertheless, so shall I keep the six prime for one roll? Why not? Okay. Five one. So which point do I want to clear? This one. Hmm. Or this. This gives me maybe trouble on some fives. But it's actually the natural way of clearing. Not so sure. Six four is bad. That's a good shot actually. Four two. So now I think I had enough in the race, so I won't hit loose or anything. Okay, but of course I won't. I will risk these two numbers simply to gain bigger advantage in the race. Of course, it's still far from being Jin, the race that is. Okay, that was it, I suppose. Okay, four one lead. have to be slightly more conservative with my initial cubes but and with taking his cubes but shouldn't deviate too much either so double force seems to be the my standard opening roll I don't mind so this is still too early cube I think making the juice looks fine here and yeah this should be a strong cube especially because of his liability the blood on his juice point I'm leading in all departments gammon threat is there yeah I think he did the right thing even trailing to pass this. All the advantages were on my side. So 6-3. I can run, which is my first idea. This looks a bit like an overplay. Yeah, I think I will just run. Four, good shot. So now I want to escape with my last back checker, of course. 
which I'm successful at. Again, holding game with, without a racing lead, clear favorite, but I can still try to improve my position. Certainly that duplicates double force. Looks like the right play. Double force is good anyway, and that's the only hit. Six four, great shot. So now I think I'm in cubing territory. Even though I'm down in the race, but yeah, he will break his board. I can make a six prime, so yeah. This should be strong cube. Not sure if he had to pass this as well, but a good shot. Oops. So far the openings work out nicely for me. So I think this is better than 13-6. Okay, five point. Wow, this plays itself pretty much so now. I mean, he's passing a lot. I've got the very strong prime. And now he's leaving me huge market losers with the hitting numbers. He cannot prime me. Yeah, next cube. And I think he should take this one, probably. I mean, he has to start taking at some point. I mean, I would be happy to win a point here without a fight. But let's see. Yeah, being down, yeah, I would have taken, I think, happy with the result. Point by point here, making progress, so this is really bad. Fully expecting to get cubed here. I, okay. I think he should have cubed because, I mean, not so much his market loses, but I could have rolled something terrible now and then it wouldn't be a take anymore. So here I'm willing to take with my racing lead. Don't like my position that much, but I think this is a very clear money take and don't think I should deviate that much at the score. Maybe it's a pass, but it just feels wrong. To pass this. So far I'm rolling well in this game, so... What is he going to play? I think he probably should go for the priming plan so make the eight remake the eight because he's running out of uh, material i think this is too passive 
like settling for a holding structure. Don't like it? Well, I like to see it. Uh, but uh, I think it's the wrong idea. Okay, I think I got a hit. And then... Okay. Maybe that was a bit too passive. I don't know. But yeah, I haven't. Didn't see really much else. So I certainly don't want to get stuck on the 22. He doesn't have any material. So I will split my back checkers. I mean, any material to attack me. So now he's in full back game mode, it seems. Do I want to hit more checkers? Not especially interest, interested. So what can I do here? That's interesting. So I think the bar point has some value. And certainly want to step out. Yeah, why not step out with both? Looks a little bit strange, but don't even know if he's so eager to hit me. And maybe the double hits hurt me. Yeah, maybe I should have run with one checker only, but yeah. Yeah, I'm curious about this play. I feel strongly that for now I want to keep, uh, I want to make my bar point, but who knows. So I won't be able to destroy his timing anyway, so do I want to hit anything? I can play without hitting, but then he can hit and cover and just play go forward so I think I should minimize his possibilities first to go forward but yeah these these types of games are really difficult to play certainly happy to roll an ace for example to or a four to get my Checkers in the inner board moving, so don't really see much else again. I mean, he cannot hold all his points forever. So now he already has to decide whether he wants to play checker deep in his board or give up one of his back game points. I mean, I'm certainly will attack if he leaves the anchor. So now he decides to simply play inside the board. So I will certainly hit on the deuce if I can. Yeah, but in the end, yeah, I much rather would have hit on the five, of course, but m maybe can do that now. Okay, so if I hit, then the four has to go here. That kind of looks strange. Don't want to do this, I think. So stop clearing my points like this, or I can also try to clear my bar point next, which is actually my problem point. This looks more natural. I don't know, but I certainly don't want to hit against this strong front structure.
So now he is down to a 1 4 back game. 6 is forced. Then the 3. Probably here. Fewer shots. Yeah. Okay. I think. Now I'm in trouble, of course. Depending on what I roll. Okay. Ace is bad. Too good either, so that's of course worst case scenario. Can you do? Everything forced. Hope of course to establish an anchor somewhere. Yeah, I'm curious to see how I should have played this game in the analysis. What XG thinks is the right way to go. So, still no decisions. Okay. Still no decisions. Better roll an ace now, and well, maybe not. I mean, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> there are some really terrible aces here. This is okay. Hit with a five, and now I really want to roll an ace. Yes, yeah, of course, you should go for the close out. That's his plan. And I should hope that I can anchor somehow. Yeah, this is all not terribly interesting. Yeah, yesterday I saw the UBC final, the UBC Denmark final on the Galaxy channel and yeah, I have to admit I really look forward to playing live tournaments again. I was very busy finishing my book but now it's really almost done. My deadline is for sending it to the printing house is then. 12th of April, so I think I will make this deadline and after that there's nothing to do anymore, so even if I find mistakes 
no possibilities of changing things anymore so I can completely focus again on playing so I will travel to Greece to the Lutraki tournament in April so yeah I cannot play with three blots so that's the play uh, well, that's uh, hope and yeah get closer to home of course so now another six maybe seven is also nice ace deuce isn't so now I want to duplicate fives that hit on my ace and yeah this is the ace that's left so yeah great duplication effort <laughs> okay I tried <laughs> but so be it so I having this deadline because uh, in May there are the German Open, very big tournament. I recommend you going there. And uh, I want to have the, the books ready to be sold by then. So, to put them in the trunk of my car. So, and for them to arrive on time. I need to give out the script give the script to the printing house by the 12th of April so while I'm talking about the book project I somehow saved the backgammon which is cool Yeah, back games are backgammon heavy with many backgammons usually, but also in general it's not the side that plays a back game who wins the backgammons. So kind of an unusual game here and I just got very lucky in the end to save Two points. I think this looks weird. I mean, three checkers on the ace can't be correct, I think. So now my question, the question for me is whether I want to have my back checkers connected. Uh, I think I step up to the 14. So now he's having another checker on the ace. This time there's nothing he can do about it. think or maybe after his big success in the last game he tries to go for another back game which is not the best of ideas yeah so can I I don't think I can keep this with without a board I really want to make my 11 point on the other hand if I play like this, playing 8 to 3, yeah, maybe structurally that looks fine. On the other hand, what do I need my anchor for here? This is duplicating 3s and aces, so he cannot make progress in his home board. So maybe that's the way to go with a 30 pip lead and 8 to 3. But the argument for the anchor is, while I have the anchor, I, that gives me some time to build something on the offensive end, so yeah. That was certainly 
not what I wanted. Okay, uh, early bird, uh, lots of very late cubes and finally one that I think is too early. I certainly don't want to waste any time of my time bank on this decision because the take is trivial and I don't think, I mean, he has a small advantage, but I really don't think with my anchor that the volatility is high enough. Uh, now I have to leave the anchor, I think. Duplicating fours and it's just bad to be, st to be stuck with many checkers behind a prime, so now I will build my own prime, which is nice. Okay, time to anchor up again, I guess. Hope to roll a six soon to escape with my spare checker. Two sixes are better, of course. So now things are looking really good. Okay, but don't think this is good enough to recube with my lead, so now we are getting there. He dances. Hmm. So this looks really strong. I don't think this is too good to double. I can make the point, but he's got the anchor. Ah, I will cube and let him decide. Of course, with the lead, I have to be careful with my four cubes, but such a strong prime. So, that was a nice turnaround. However, I really think his cube was too early. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, everything's standard here. Now cube strategy is, uh, for me, uh, very conservative in gammonish positions, early game positions, but as the game progresses, if we get into a holding game or a race, I can actually cube quite aggressively. But here I'm certainly nowhere near cube. Gotta escape my back checker first. And certainly I don't want to leave any shots. So the ace has to go here. 13-8 or 11-6. I don't know. Maybe 11-6. Not sure. Double fours. Okay. If I make this, where are the other fours? That would be 13.5. Oops. So that's an option. So 13.5, I will play no matter what. So now, I think I should play this because otherwise my position is just too stripped. This is more flexible. 
me uh, I think I have to do this although the four point strong too of course so maybe yeah maybe now that I'm looking at it I'm not so sure anymore if I chose whether I chose the correct path here especially the race is about even yeah hmm so six pips nothing happened basically at least I'm getting my checkers home which is nice um, yeah too much contact left so yeah that's the only roll and a racing lead is not big enough he should give up his bar point shouldn't kill a checker no that's really bad but still not a cube for me I think simply because not good enough in the race now he gets rewarded for his play well maybe it was correct getting a shot yeah what else can I play okay so now it's a double pass I would say But let's see what he thinks. It's just not. Oh, maybe he wins enough games. Well, let him decide. Okay, he passes. Now I have to be really conservative with the cube. Five, three. So this looks. I'm giving up the eight point. I really want to unstack. Not too happy about splitting against this stack, but I think that's what I gotta do. Six five, so certainly escape with the front checker. <coughs> Pipcon is even about, so he has a slight advantage. Yeah, I mean now he can really double very aggressively. Still a very easy take simply because there are not too many gammons there. Now he's expanding his racing lead. Okay, so I'll slot my five. So now he lost his market, of course. So good follow up for him. Now I'm back in the race. So, guess, got his market back, especially now. He's a small favorite, but that was, of course, very good rolling by me to get into this situation. So let's hope for some big numbers. Not really. Shall I pay three to two? Probably. Okay, so I just wanted to say probably two easy points for him, but as you can see, keep on fighting. Oops.
Right, so that was it probably. Yeah, two big doubles, not gonna happen this time. So now it's three away. Six away. How am I going to play this? Standard is just making the bar point, so how bad can that be? Hmm, this is an, an ugly spot at the score. Yeah, for money, easy take, very easy take, I think. I have my bar point, only one checker on the roof. Yeah, but at this score, of course I have to be really conservative. So he makes his five point and I just enter, I just don't see how, how I can drop this, maybe the score is such that I should do so I will take okay let's see maybe it feels like such an easy take if it's not an easy take for money if I was wrong in that assessment then of course this is a big drop but I felt it it would be an easy take I'm not sure though Yeah, lots of pressure, he should make three point, hit loose, and now I'm really in trouble when I dance. Yeah, this was as bad as it can get. Yeah, <laughs> this score maybe, yeah, I had my bar point. Now, of course, I feel really stupid after the sequence. Uh, yeah, but I also don't want to be too results oriented, but yeah, yeah, with all the builders, yeah, whatever, we will see it in the analysis and if, if I made a super blunder here, so be it. My thought was, if I get the anchor with, with the bar point made and his checkers on the 24, I'm really in good shape. So another close out appearing uh, on the horizon and I have already talked about the book so <laughs> running out of subjects should maybe I should avoid these close out situations. <laughs> uh, Yeah, at 
three away, seven away, for sure I would have passed. Hmm. Second guessing here still, but there's nothing else to do, to be honest. Also, there is game in danger with three checkers on the roof. I mean, I, before, I barely escaped the back gammon. That would be the killer. Uh, yeah. Really? I mean, I didn't pay too much attention, but that feels wrong somehow. Okay, here's my chance. Missed it, but at least... Okay, why should he take these checkers off? I'm not sure he... Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. He is assured to win a gammon. And he's pretty much assured not to win a backgammon. So, yeah. That's certainly better. Not that it matters much. One, two, three, four, whatever. Not gonna matter. Don't want to waste too much time, so now I better get that checker moving. And unfortunately, we enter the final stage of the match as the underdog. So now I really want to have Gavinish positions. So I certainly make my deuce point at the score and I have to queue very aggressively. Even though this is not a cube yet, don't think I should slot here since I already unstacked my six point. This is nice, makes some points. Of course, if he rolls something bad, could consider cubing, but here I don't see any big advantage for me nor a significant gammon threat, so now the underdog even. Bigger underdog. Simply. He's gaining ground in the race. Makes a nice blocking point. And there's nothing left for me but building my board. Another good shot by him. So, race is still closed, so my take point is 25%, uh, pretty much exactly so. Nine pips down, I am think I'm over 25, but not much, to be honest, so not a good spot to be in. He should keep his 10 point play. You can see why, no, but uh, yeah, the race is he's not good enough in the race. Okay, light at the end of the tunnel. So now all of a sudden he's got to pass my cube. Okay, cool. Of course, would be happy if he takes. He needs 26% and I don't see him having 26% here, but maybe he's intrigued by it. 
simply winning the match uh, with winning the game, but no. So now two away, two away. Question is, does he know about the? Of course, it can't be wrong to cube at the first opportunity. I mean, I wrote about it. Uh, I even proved it formally in the theory of backgammon. But maybe he doesn't know about it, so he should cube, of course. Um, so we'll just see what he does. If he doesn't cube, uh, which he does, so he knows most, I mean, almost everybody knows about it, but uh, still, so it's not an insult to Dimitri that I didn't double, it was just uh, simply I mean, you never know, and I also don't lose anything. So, he has all the builders to make important points, so I feel uh, forced to hit on the deuce as a tempo play, so he cannot carry out his threats. So, it's gonna be by play. So, for example, here, now he is not able to make the five. Again, have to keep him busy, busy, anchoring on the 22, certainly bad, so maybe I can make some progress finally. Shall I make the 4 point as well, uh, the deuce point as well? This looks weird, I mean, just, I mean, why not go for the stronger board? Blood on the deuce point is a liability, so yeah, why not just make it? So things are going downhill. I'm actually glad that uh, yeah he should I think run with both. He's way ahead in the race and just try to get this game home the easy way. Yeah, I think that's correct. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he should make his bar. Certainly will attack with force, as I can do here. So this is clear. Do I need to step up? I mean, this swing on 3-6 is really big and I really like the 9 point in case he enters on the 3 so is my game plan really yeah of course this uh, this is also nice to be able to anchor with 3 so maybe that's that's more important the race is close and yeah if he dances I'm certainly happy to be at the edge of his prime so I will do it like this didn't turn out too well. So now I need fours to make the nine or sixes to hit. So this is another interesting... No, it's not very interesting. Of course I make the deuce and the nine. Since the eight point is open, that's perfectly fine for me here. Okay, he will make his four point and I will make nothing. Um, so I guess it's just this. What else can I do? I can play like this, maybe that's it. this is better. So this is only four, five, six, four, double fives is good anyway. So why should I? give him so many shots, yeah, probably better. So now double sixes would be a very convenient roll. But any number that at least attacks or like as in this case, Makes the prime is okay. Guess nothing else, and hope that he doesn't roll a five. So really interesting priming game we have. And I 
think I got to hit. So what's what I mean I cannot do this. Certainly I can do this, but then with the five he's gone. And then I will have to attack next time. I'm not worried about losing a gammon, so I'll just attack him here. Yeah. What else? Okay. Okay, so I first want to cover here, certainly, and now I should roll some sixes quickly. Five, two. Yeah, looks okay. So it's all about sixes. There's one. And there's the other one. So a very fortunate turn of events here. So now, okay, double sixes is of course terrible if I play like this. Do I really need to guard against double sixes here? But I also want to make my ace point, so yeah. So let's do it like this with the maximum builders. And yeah. Looks good. Until it doesn't anymore. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think I just have to minimize shots, uh, cannot give the two extra numbers, and yeah. Okay, so don't want to leave anything anymore, so, so that's this. Yeah, another exciting match uh, like the last one, uh, and again with a very fortunate outcome for me. So then there is still the question, how did I play, especially this take that I'm not so happy in hindsight, but yeah, it's always the danger of being too results oriented. So, okay, cool. Yeah, I played okay, it seems. And we will look at the details in a minute. So here is the the XG plus plus verdict. Uh, I think I played well, not exceptionally well. Happy with my checker play. That was pretty good. Uh, made two terrible cube mistakes. Uh, one of those two was completely avoidable. I shot myself in the foot, as they say, but we will get to that. Uh, first, uh, check up play mistake. Yeah, I don't blame myself too much. I felt like I shouldn't step up into the attack. I saw the stack on the eight point, but it seems like uh, I'm so far ahead in the race, I'm running out of time and don't shouldn't expose two blots probably, so this is just something, mistake I could make every day. And then as you may remember, and I commentated on it, some bad cube, cube decisions by him, for example, uh, I would have been in a tough, tough spot in this I don't know what I would would have done. Probably I would have passed, uh, to be honest. Uh, surprised that it's such a clear take. And the next cube as well. Uh, yeah. Clear double this one. However, I would have taken. Yeah, and then I got the impression that my opponent uh, is not the strongest of players. And then I got to these racing positions where, where I felt like, yeah, maybe it's a small take, but why should I play on a two cube and game continue on a two cube in a game where no skill is involved anymore? And as it already happened, uh, 
thousands of times it feels uh, to me that when I try to play the opponent, uh, I just make stupid things. So look, at, I mean, I didn't know that this take is that easy, but let's say in a BMAP format or uh, under other circumstances, I probably simply would have done, uh, used uh, my race formul formulas. Generally, I'm using eyesight and for sure eyesight would have told me take, so I would have taken. So this is just, just stupid, uh, cannot say it. Phrase it in any other way, and yeah, not not only stupid, stupid lazy, I would say. Uh, uh, should have uh, made the effort and uh, just played my game and not uh, inventing some reasons for why I should pass this, so that I don't need to calculate uh, whether I have a take or not. So, two hundred in equity just wasted away. Okay. Next game, there was basically nothing. Double pass, also not good enough to play on, not enough gammons, so nothing special here. Okay, here, that was, yeah. <laughs> okay, again, I've wrote about it, and uh, this, precisely this uh, situation where I think the position is almost identical where uh, th the sixes from the bar for the opponent play well after hitting. So if I play like this. Uh, and uh, then, uh, so basically everything hits back, so I'm jeopardizing my advantage by hitting. doesn't gain me much. So I wasn't happy about hitting, but I just should have followed the, the advice from my book. Uh, yeah, um, maybe, maybe I can even bring up the position because it's just funny how similar this looks. So I'll just bring up that position just a second. So actually, this is a perfect example of how difficult it is to get rid of your biases. Uh, now, when you look at the position on the left from the book, I mean, that's Pretty much, actually, White's position is, is identical. So I had it, I wrote it, I know it. But for some reason, this felt different. I don't know. Uh, I think what swayed me in uh, the position from my match was that if I play this, that I have to get, leave a direct shot. And I thought this would matter, but it doesn't. So, so yeah, um, I misplayed this position from the book and uh, here you can see uh, the solution. So that was a blunder and I managed to blunder again. So yeah, it's really hard to get rid of bad habits, because, but maybe now in the future if I get ever to something similar again, I will finally learn from him, from it. Uh, so uh, let's not abandon hope completely. Okay, so this was a really avoidable mistake simply because I knew this position. Okay, next mistake. Yeah. Thought I built my board, but uh, yeah, what do I need the prime for? This is so much stronger. Uh, he doesn't want to run anyway, being down in the race, and this is so much more flexible. And after playing this, I will be probably breaking my prime anyway on my next turn uh, to cover my inside blots. So this is much more flexible. But sometimes you have your prime and uh, simply don't get uh, even yeah I even thought I didn't even think about it it's just like uh, then you don't get get the idea that because of flexibility uh, you should break your prime prematurely and uh, uh, especially what do you need a strong uh, a four prime for when the opponent has no intention to run anyway so that was yeah uh, well, I would say a mistake 
could make any time here similar thing uh, I didn't want to be attacked and I thought I had enough time to try to escape later uh, okay that is game four now uh, yeah this was this this uh, situation where I was prepared probably not to cube if he makes his five point, maybe it would have been a cube anyway. I don't know, 27% would be close. But now, since he made the mistake of not making my five point, uh, the cube was clear, so that made life easy for me. Nothing much in this game. Okay. Next game was a shorty, perfect game. And then this position, yeah, strong double as expected, low winning percentage for him. And only because he's uh, trailing, he in the score, he can, but yeah, would have been close for money as well. So this is a whatever cube, whatever take or pass. Next one is a clear take and yeah again he induced the cube by leaving the blot uh, by, by making the juice point had he covered the 10 so that would take out the volatility uh, out of the position at least uh, these these four hitting numbers swayed me to cube and yeah, he was too passive in his take pass decisions or too conservative the whole match. So this is a perfect example. Uh, clear take uh, would have been much closer or probably a pass for money. But at uh, some point when you are trailing, you've got to fight back. So then one missed cube uh, that shows you how early you should ship it with a significant uh, deficit in the score and yeah still an easy take but a good decision here by him to keep this what else uh, simply okay that was where I escaped the backgammon so there I think yeah that was the back game I, I think I played this back game yeah, perfectly. So uh, I don't see any big mistakes or any. Wow, cool. I mean, that's yeah, that's the it's the back game in the end. Yeah, he's playing for the back game. You let, just let me check. Usually, when opponent plays a three checker, three point back game, uh, you have some red. Um, at least that's my color for blunders, but yeah, maybe it wasn't that difficult, but yeah, I'm just, just, uh, so that was the only mistake in this back game by me. So I'm, of course, so talking about the stupid things, uh, also should talk about things I was happy about. Yeah, uh, okay, that was interesting. The double sixes was indeed correct by, I mean, it didn't matter, but then he should have taken the opportunity to go forward. I mean, he has a prime and can easily crunch, expose more blots. So yeah, he, he made some bigger mistakes here. And yeah, the rest was uh, yeah, not very exciting for me. Uh, he hit two checkers. I was very lucky to escape the back and loss. So here's the next game six away eight away game nine uh, yeah where he gave a very early cube uh, also no volatility basically no market losers slight favorite yes or moderate favorite but no reason to cube but his mistake wasn't was nothing compared to mine I completely misevaluated this position. I thought uh, I would be like a seventy-five percent. I would have like seventy-five percent here. Like he uh, 
sometimes crunches. I can make the five solid five primes. So I just didn't see him having almost 30% winning chances. Uh, had I known this, of course, I would have never cubed. Uh, so this was a complete mis-evaluation of the position. So I have to look at it a little bit, m bit better for sure. Um, yeah, what can you do? Uh, yeah, you can see gigantic mistake by me, but uh, rewarded. I mean, this was definitely not a bluff double. I mean, so uh, I, I, of course, uh, would like to tell you, oh, yeah, I had the feeling, blah, blah. No, I mis-evaluated the position and uh, was very lucky that he dropped this. Super easy take. Yeah, he's giving away lots of match winning chances here. So got lucky, got away with it, but still a really awful decision here. Simply mis-evaluated the position. Next game was uneventful, at least from my side. Yeah, correct pass. And yeah, the double force that I criticized, not such a big deal. Ah, my double force, yes. Uh, where I felt afterward, I, I overlooked this afterwards that I should have made my four point in the end, it felt correct and indeed it was. Yeah, I was afraid that after this, the position, so then where do I play fives? I leave shots and, but this is just so much, much stronger. And yeah, I can run, run out with sixes. This is also kind of inflexible. Gives me bad fives. I mean, I rolled something like, like yeah, I rolled a five next turn and had to leave a shot or something, or at some point, I don't remember, but but yeah. Yeah, uh, I was pretty convinced uh, already while playing that this is bad, was bad. Okay, I should have made the three point. Wow, yeah, because of his stack usually, when you have made the four point, oftentimes it's correct uh, to, to not make the three point, but uh, play for flexibility and split here. However, he has a blitzing formation and you shouldn't split into a blitzing formation. So that was bad. I mean, I'm certainly disappointed when I make kind of a big mistake in a four roll position, but yeah nothing to do about it rest was fine cube action anything yeah kind of an, a little bit too early but at this score you really can't make big mistakes when you are a favorite with the cube i mean doubling and now we can talk about hindsight bias because I mean, remember that I lost this game Gammon without ever moving after accepting the cube here and it really, really, really felt bad. However, when taking, I brought the argument, uh, yeah, this is such an easy money, money take, how can that be a pass even at the score? I mean, of course, at two way, four way it would have been a big pass, but uh, yeah. That's or probably also, yeah, at uh, three away, four away, but here gammon value is not that high. Yes, he wins tons of gammons, but yeah, I win over 40% of games. So I had the correct assessment. I fortunately, I made the correct decision, but then the game went as it did, and I was really doubting my. Uh, decision just because of a one game rollout so to speak yeah but uh, yeah i'm glad that i took it and then three way two way yeah here yeah i i, I felt at some point i was close to 25 percent so you can see i barely have a take here i would have taken but yeah, he should have cubed here, so then I was lucky 
to roll double fives and of course um, then with uh, this take point of 26 is a gigantic pass and then there's a double match point okay here yeah I was really happy that he stayed back so he just he played for the prime but uh, he just is the final position the five prime but he just should have gone for for the race with all the back checkers escape flexible position plenty of roads to make additional points so I was really fortunate that he did this and the rest so uh, yeah I had to hit still I'm, I'm looking if there is anything interesting making the night okay here it was correct to step up but it just didn't matter I mean first instinct was to just make the nine point because it's, that's a really valuable point and in the end I decided for the other play but it just didn't matter yeah and in the end uh, I was forced uh, to attack him try to contain him no worries about gamma losses that was fine and I got lucky so okay so I should okay this does matter again it's not worth our time to talk about it yeah I was a little bit afraid of double sixes but I decided for the extra builder then another moment I had to survive like as in the last match where my opponent missed a decisive shot at DMP so that was good for me so all in all I mean yeah this uh, <laughs> real this this mistake uh, in the first game this pass that this lazy pass uh, I mean I, w I won't say it pisses me off but yeah I mean these things uh, shouldn't happen overall performance was still okay so and the good thing is about winning these matches uh, that will uh, provide us with more material because the more I win the longer I will remain in the tournament and uh, the more videos I will do uh, so again Smash the like button if you enjoyed this and found it helpful and subscribe to the channel and until next time, bye bye.